I am Dr. B. Vinmayil, Assistant Professor of English, B. Vani Permal College for Women, Virudhanagar. In this video, you are going to see Shelley's Arthusa. Shelley is one of the major British romantic poet. He lives in the 18th century. He is the deep-rooted rebel against the social and political oppressions in his era. His poems are the expressions of the spirit of rebellion, hope and imagination. They call for justice, equality and especially the liberation of human spirit. His idea of romanticism is closely related to nature. He finds nature as a source of imagination, inspiration and solace. His poems mostly deal with the relationship, the bond between human and nature. Especially this poem, Arthusa, also is a beautiful expression of the divine nature. As a whole, his works highlight the utopian vision for a better society. His best works are To a Skylark, O to the West Wind and his most famous one and only verse drama The Sensei. Let's see the What is Myth? Myth is a collection of stories or related to deities and demigods. Greek mythology is a genre of ancient Greek folklore. It is passed from one generation to another generation orally. So it is a part of oral poetic tradition. Most of the Greek mythologies deal with the genesis of the world, how the world was created and who are the divine rulers in the beginning, who are the successors of the divine rulers and how humans protest against those divine rulers. The titans who ruled earlier in the primitive world. These are the stories we can see in Greek mythology. Homer's Iliad and Odyssey are the two famous epics. They are the first epics written in the world. They deal with the stories or the myths of the heroes of Trojan War. So the classical Greece, we understood from reading all these Greek mythological stories, it is highly established that the classical Greece has contributed much to the human civilization. And Athens still having the monumental and eternal temples which adore and worship the gods and goddesses referred in the Greek mythology. Arthusa is the Greek myth which deals about the beautiful nymph Arthusa. She is under the ward of Artemis who is the goddess of wild animals and the hunt. This beautiful nymph once took a bath in the river. Alpheus, the god of the river, and he is a hunter too. He falls in love with Arthusa and he chases her while she was taking bath. This Nim, the daughter of Nereus and Doris, in order to escape from his hands, she goes under the sea and Towards the end, failed to face Alpheus and his power and his desire. She worships or requests Artemis and Artemis helps her God by transforming her into a, into a fount or a spring in a faraway land which is from Alpheus. She has created a cloud, thick swell of cloud and hides the 
nim artisa so that she can appear as a spring in artigia a far away land from uh, western greece as it is in italy artigia is in italy whereas alpheus plays with the artisas archesas artisia in western greece but alpheus with the help of zeus the god of thunder and sky and the head of the titans and who is the head of the palace of titans he helps alpheus to become a river in italy so alpheus now can easily merge with confluence with the fount the water resource the fresh water resource artusa in italy and then later on uh, they united this is the myth given by homer's iliad and here you could see the indulgence of love desire passion and transformation and let's see the poem and this is the first picture which you witness now is the fount still in italy and the second picture below it is a river alpheus and it is believed that whatever we throw in the alpheus river in peloponnes can be seen in the well so it proves that the merging of the confluence of the union of alpheus and artusa let me read the poem artusa arose from her couch of snows in the acroceronian mountains this is the acroceronian mountains in albania artusa is playing enjoying the nature by raising from the mountains covered with snows and from cloud and from crag crab it is a steep rough rock she is jumping from there to there as she is a fount with many a jag jag means a short projection which you can see in mountains shepherding her bright fountains as here is the reference to the fountain the spring or the fresh water well she is taking a care of all her fountains she leaped down the rocks with her rainbow locks it shows how she enjoys being away from alpheus in italy she is bubbling with a good spirit here you can note down shelley's reference to the liberation of spirit that is mandatory for a romantic age and which refers to the spirit of romanticism with her rainbow locks when she is playing as she is a fountain you could see the rainbow which occurs in the valley streaming among the streams as a fountain she spreads as a stream her steps paved with green the downward ravine which slopes to the western gleams ravine is a narrow deep valley samma veli nu solluvale adhu da ravine and she walks from as a stream to the valley as a river and gliding and springing she went ever singing look at the spirit of artisia she is like a free ever spirited woman here you can compare a woman to a river which is very free in murmurs as soft as sleep the sound of the uh, river you could see the aesthetic essence in the poem first he has given a visual representation of the whole mountain which is filled with snow and streams and you can easily visualize it is a feast to the eyes 
then as a sensuous poet it may be the sensuous poet but all romantics if you find there are feast to the all senses imagination eyes and sounds here the murmuring sound of the fountain which flows from mountains and stilly steepy rocks and then to the valley the earth seemed to love her yes she is so lovable to the earth as she is flourishing from one place to another because she is her fount really flourishes and makes the earth fertile so earth loves her and heaven smiled above her the sky the heaven looks at her happiness it smiles at her as she lingered towards the deep she wants to be there for more than uh, she wants to be stay wants to stay there for a long time lingering means staying in a particular place or for a uh, more than usual time she spends that uh, more time much time than usual and look at this picture it just pictureizes how arutiza arose from her couch of snows yes it is the place in western greece peloponnese peloponnese is the place in western greece it is the place of uh, alpheus and arutiza is a nymph who enjoys playing in this particular mountain and she is mesmerized by her beauty she mesmerized alpheus by her beauty so with some passionate desire desire he chases her then come to the second stanza of the poem then alpheus bold on his glacier cold with his strident the mountain stroke and opened a chasm in the rocks with a spasm all erymanthus shook erymanthus is a mountain in greece and alpheus which with his glacier cold look at is there you can see snow but when you it is referred as alpheus he, glacier is referred which is very rigid very rough uh, when arthusa is portrayed by uh, shelley you could see very uh, lovely she is described how uh, free she is but uh, when she is when he is portraying alpheus there you can see how hard rigid and how powerful he is how cold he is how brave or bold he is how authoritative or autonomous he is with his trident trident is a three headed spear thirisulam sollole adha mari irukiradha trident he is holding that trident it shows his power and autonomy over the things in the world especially his uh, with his trident he strew, strike the mountain he strikes the mountain with this trident it shows his destructive power maybe the uh, autonomy he which he has the ardent power he has is used to hit at uh, the mountains as well as on the vulnerable like arthusia this is what shelly wants to highlight in these lines and open the ch- chasm chasm is a, a deep hole therefore he made some uh, destruction in the rocks and the black south wind it unsealed behind the urns of the silent snow and earthquake and thunder his appearance in the erymanthus shook and created an earthquake so with that earthquake and thunder he entered into the life of arthusia once again even though she is hidden in uh, even though she is uh, playing her life is going to be uh, something else after the appearance of alpheus did rend in sunder rend means uh, uh, tear into pieces all those words refer to the destructive power of alpheus rend in sunder sunder splitting apart the bars of the springs below so the earthquake has happened and the springs 
come up and the bear, bird and the hair of the river god river god here is he is obvious he is having a bird and hair seen through the torrent sweep as he followed the light of the fleet nymphs flight to the brink of the dorian deep as the earth has splitted upon the earth the fountains below the earth come out so he could witness or uh, look at the beauty of artusa so he follows her with some flight but where is the flea nanim she has with her clouds and with her water flees away from the hands of alpheus that's why he followed her like a light but she takes a flight to the dorian deep he she goes down into the sea you could see here in this picture he followed like a light but where she has taken a flight to the sea and he pursues her he doesn't stop pursuing her he chases her wherever she goes and that takes her to the italian river river oh save me oh guide me and bid the deep hide me for he grasped me now by the hair the loud ocean heard to its blue depths stir and divided at her prayer look at this how violence is exerted on a vulnerable woman even in greek mythological stories even that's why the retelling of al arthusia by shelley highlights the feministic point of view even in the romantic age a domestic it may be a domestic violence or it may be the power exerted by men over women he grasped me now by the hair this is the physical harassment you can say and divided at her prayer and under the water the earth's white daughter fled like a sunny beam okay so the earth gets departed uh, so she could get into the sea behind her descended her billows and billows means all those uh, uh, clouds uh, whatever uh, things waves what cloud like water waves they followed her unblended with the brackish dorian dream okay this dorian stream is referred as brackish because she is a fresh water now whereas brackish means a salty sea water she could not blend with that sea as being a fresh water resource she could not merge with the sea like a gloomy stain on the emerald mane alpheus rushed behind as an eagle pursuing a doubt to its ruin here unblended the term unblended refers to the unwillingness of arthus arthusa to the desires of alpheus so the woman is protesting she is not readily accepting the power exerted on her just because alpheus is mighty enough to control her suppress her arthusa need not to be obey her it's what he, you can see in this particular poem lines but orpheus is not at all retreat he is not withdrawing he is again pursuing her like a eagle look at the image used by first he used the thunderous appearance of the alpheus now he is used the animalistic eagle like animalistic imagery where Uh, alpheus approaches arthusia like an uh, eagle the prey bird which catches the dove as its prey ruin the term used by shelley is ruin it definitely will ruin arthusia's life next look at the map and this is the thing but frightened by the bad adv- bold advances of uh, alpheus um arthusa leaps into the sea so he takes the way from uh west greece western greece to uh southeast uh italy you could see from 
Alpheus to Syracuse. She has ended up in Syracuse. Syracuse is a place in uh, uh, a small island in uh, Artichia is a small island in Syracuse. Syracuse is a sea and uh, it is in Sicily. It is in the southern Italy and from there western Greece to Syracuse they have been chasing and under the bowers were the ocean powers okay and with some power he could subdue Arthusia, sit on the pearled thrones through the coral woods look at the beautiful description of uh, Shelley uh, regarding the sea he has made use of all the vocabulary related to mountains sea through the coral woods of the weltering floods weltering the turbulent movement of the waves over heaps of unvalued stones through the dim beams unvalued stones here may be referred to the treasures of the sea underwater through the dim beams which amid the streams weave a network of colored light you could imagine how it will be deep under the sea how it will be dim without light there will be a strike of a, stray, a strike of rains very uh, dim in uh, power and the, under the caves where shadowy waves are as green as the forest night outspeeding the shark look at this these people and the for or outspeeding the spark that is Arthur and Alpheus almost are making love under the ocean's foam and up through the rifts of the mountain cliffs rifts here refers to the large crack in the ocean and they passed to their Dorian home and you can see the convergence of the enchanted well and here it is I use the word enchanted to refer Arthur's condition now. Alpheus throws all his power to enchant Ar Arthusa. Even though she is bubbling, now she is obeying the words of Alpheus. And they are may accepting their love. Even though it is an unrequited love in the beginning, after she becomes a fount and after uh, Alpheus becomes a river in uh, Italy with the help of Zoius. They both unite and this is the last stanza where we can see Shelley's uh, romantic idea, uh, radical ideas. And now from their fountains in Enna's mountains. This is the Enna's mo Enna mountain. They all from their fountains, they both become united so it is referred as their fountains down one way where the morning bask okay they are enjoying they are enjoying the warmth morning in the morning they are enjoying the warmth of the sun like friends once parted grown single-hearted grown single-hearted they both get united this is the word which hints at the union of Arthur and Alpheus they apply their watery task they employ their watery task. What is that watery task? The fresh water resource sometimes may take river to the sea. That is their task. At sunrise they leap from their cradle steep in the cave of the shelving hill. At noon tide they flow. Once again they unite and they flow from hills, ocean, steep caves. Here. At noon tide, this is a one day time from morning to night. They are enjoying their reunion like a de once departed friends. Through the woods below and the meadows of As Asafidal. Remember, I uh, Asafidal is a flower related to the underworld. But it is referred here by Shelley and it is a grassland. Meadows means grassland. And they are enjoying their noon time, uh, staying in these meadows. And at night they sleep in the rocking deep beneath the Artigian shore. Remember, Artigian, Artigia is the place in Sicily, 
in south uh, southern italy it is where arthusia is chased by um, alpheus okay and like spirits that lie in the azure sky okay like spirits that lie in the azure sky azure means the blue sky when they love but live no more the last line definitely strikes everyone and make you to read again and again okay they just lie down like spirits in the blue sky when they love and but live no more till their end they live they love and they enjoy and the and coming to the themes of the poem already we have uh, seen how he has retold the myth arthusa in the myth you can see the unrequited love of alpheus one who is chasing arthusa and becoming a river he gets into her and in myth you can see arthusa as a hearty woman Uh, because he she is a maiden she she doesn't want to lose her uh, chastity to alpheus so she is portrayed as a hearty woman recruit refuting a worthy suitor alpheus is uh, shown as a worthy suitor for any woman but whereas shelly being a radical thinker he has uh, portrayed alpheus as an, a villain mostly as a villain who is oppressing the uh, real image of real spirit of a woman so when we read the poem you could see alpheus as a heartless and evil especially when you read the second stanza you could understand how he has portrayed alpheus as a villainous character in this poem and arthusia you could see as an innocent young maiden who is uh, playing in the nature who is living her a life closely related to nature and you could see arthusia as the representative of radical and free minded free spirited romantic um and whereas alpheus is portrayed as a mighty power awful grandeur which tries to oppress women and thank you for your patient listening